Greetings and welcome back to Tidbits of the Word with your host, Bill Redfield. On this morning's program, Pastor Sam Buckingham of Columbia River Fellowship in Mansfield, Washington, brings us a message of grave importance as he preaches on the Day of the Lord. Many have read some of the prophecies that deal with the end times, but have they pondered them? How about you? Pastor Sam is going to wet your whistle, so strap in. But first, a special song written by Paul Cowie will set the stage. Key to the Gospel, performed by Pastor Sam and company. I've got the key to the gospel, and when I get there, I'll find my soul. You see, the world's in an uproar, but the good news is everywhere. Your path is straight. So ease your mind, the truth you're searching, you're sure to find. You see the world's in an uproar, but the good news is everywhere. Oh, when you find your peace of mind. When you're needing the truth in God's time Good morning and welcome to Columbia River Fellowship. I'm glad we're able to come here again today. At least we can do this. Uh, we're going to give you more information later on. I may be calling some people this week with some plans. But today we're just going to jump right in. Uh, the Lord spoke to me this week and he basically told me that I'm to preach out of Joel chapter 2. Now the Lord and I had just a little bit of an argument about this because in my opinion, I'm not the greatest prophecy guy in the world. I do it. I'm not afraid of it. I will go right at it. But I know there's a lot of people that are probably better than I am. And I'm going to work on it and try to get better. But the Lord really wrestled with me about this. So I truly do believe the Lord wants us to go to Joel chapter 2. And this will be more than likely a two-part a two -part series. So we're going to jump in here and just give you a little bit of, bit of background about Joel. Joel prophesied at a time of great devastation in Judah. An enormous plague of locusts had stripped the countryside of all vegetation and destroyed the pastures of all the livestock. In only a few hours, a beautiful and lush land had become a place of desolation and destruction. And destruction. The plague of locusts Joel wrote about was more destructive than anyone had ever seen. 
Not only had the people lost all their crops, they lost the seeds they needed for the next planting. Circumstances were dire. Famine and drought had seized the entire land. People and animals were dying. Their condition was so profound and disastrous that Joel saw only one explanation. This is God's judgment. And I believe it was. Now, you'll see in prophecy many times that the Lord will take a situation that is actually happening. And many Bible scholars said that they believed that there was actually a locust famine or a locust plague uh, during this time. But he takes that situation and he uses it to show us what he is really talking about in the future. So as we go through this, we're going to see that this disaster, this plague of locusts, is really a type of or is pointing to the day of the Lord. Now the word or the phrase the day of the Lord is mentioned at least 75 times according to many scholars. I have not just jumped right in there and counted them, but I've seen many and so have you. And so it's a significant phrase, the day of the Lord. Now we need to know that the day of the Lord is different than the Lord's day. It sounds the same, but they are different things. So when we see the day of the Lord, we're looking at when the Lord comes back and establishes his kingdom here on earth. Joel chapter 1 verse 15 says, Alas, for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as destruction from the Almighty. So when we are looking at the day of the Lord, the th first thing we need to notice here is that when the day of the Lord comes, it'll end where everything's wonderful, but it starts out rough, horrible, tough. It'll, it will be tough times. And so when we talk about the locusts that are found in chapter 1, I think that really these locusts are a type of what is going to happen. So the tribulation period is coming. And we're going to see what the Lord says about it, what Joel said about it. Joel uh, chapter 2 verse 1 was written a little more than 800 years before Christ was born. So 2.1 says this, Blow the trumpet in Zion. And sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord is coming. For it is at hand. I believe it's at hand. Many other people say it's at hand. That means it's coming. It's near. And if it was near, you know, 2,800 years ago, how much more is it near today? And all the things that are going on, I think we've said before, you can look at everything that's going on and we can see Bible prophecy happening right before our very eyes. Right before our very eyes. And although people thought 50 years ago and 80 years ago, and we knew some of those people, that the Lord was coming during their day, the Lord is still waiting, waiting. But he is coming. And it's going to be rough on this earth. So blow the trumpet in Zion. This trumpet alarm was different than any other type of trumpet blow. We know, as we look, this is what the trumpet, this is the trumpet that they were uh, talking about. It wasn't a brass trumpet, it was a ram's horn trumpet. And I can play many instruments, but I cannot play a trumpet. You have to talk to my son about that. He can play one, but there's no way I could, I could never play one. But this trumpet alarm was to alert people, this particular one was to alert people that something desperate was coming and to get ready. Something where there was really no human hope. A lot of times they would blow this type of alarm when armies were coming or something very devastating was going to hand, it was coming and it was going to happen. And the people have to gather, either run or prepare to take on whatever enemy it would be. So this is the type of thing that the Lord is saying. He's saying, blow this type of alarm. Sound the alarm. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. Now, this time that is coming, this tribulation period that is coming, is not something I want to go through. I don't think anybody would really want to go through it, but people are ignorant, and they don't want to listen. And I'm here to tell you, I'm blowing a trumpet right now on everyone's behalf. My little part of this, 
I'm blowing the trumpet and saying, the Lord is coming. Get ready. We're blowing the trumpet in Zion. We used to sing this song, and it was a happy time, and we'd sing it, kind of a celebration song. But the reality is, this type of trumpet is not a happy thing. This meant bad things were coming. Tough times were coming. So we are warning this world that tough times are coming. And if you do not want to go through that time, then you need to accept Jesus Christ as Savior. That is the only way that you're going to escape this time. Now, it's not my intention today to talk about the rapture, but that rapture is going to happen. The snatching up, the great taking away, whatever you want to call it, it is going to happen. And we are going to escape that day of wrath. But the rest of the world is going to be here, and it's going to be horrible. Horrible. Verse 2 says of Joel chapter 2, a day of darkness. This is what it's going to be like. A day of darkness and gloominess. A day of clouds and thick darkness, like the morning clouds spread over the mountains. A people come, great and strong, and like the like of whom have never been. I don't know really what that means, but there is something strong coming, just like locusts that destroy everything. And they're going to come. And there's going to be problems. And they're going to really make it rough on people. If people come great and strong, there's going to be horrible things happen. The like of whom have never seen, nor will there ever be any such after them. So this time that is coming, just like this plague that happened during Joel's time, it was the worst locust plague they'd ever had. It was horrible. Well, that's a type of really of what is coming in the future. And that future is coming quickly for us. For us today, it is coming. We can see it, especially through this plague that we're in today. And the control that people are trying to exercise over people in a free nation. So it is a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like the morning clouds spread over the mountains, a people come great and strong, the like of whom I've never seen, nor will there ever be any such after them. So that is what's going to happen at the beginning of the coming of the day of the Lord. Right now, folks, we are in what many people would say, Man's day, not the Lord's day. We are in man's day. But the Lord's day is coming. One uh, commentator said, right now, men think they can solve all the world's problems. But we know they can't. But they really believe that they can if you listen to people. They think they're going to fix things. Right now, men appeal to the Supreme Court, not God's court. The Supreme Court's not going to fix everything. We need to appeal to God's court. And that day is coming when the Lord's going to come here and rule and reign. And besides that, right now during man's day or the time of the Gentiles, the Lord's name is nothing but a curse word to many people. It's a cry in shame. It's a cry in shame. In fact, that sounds like a good title to a song. But the Lord's day is coming, and it will start with a dark time of judgment. A dark time of judgment. Seven years of it. The tribulation. And I truly believe that the church is going to be out of here. And I know there's people that think differently. But I think the church is going to be out of here. Because here's what I think. There is no way, and there's people teaching this, there is no way man is going to fix things and hand it over to the Lord when he comes. There is no way. There are people teaching that we're going to make things better and better and better and better till the Lord comes. I just cannot find that in Scripture. And we are reading a portion of Scripture right now. We're reading it right now in Joel chapter 2, 1 and 2 and 3, that says, bad, hard times, perilous times, as the Scripture said, is coming for this world. Now remember, for us, the Lord will never leave us or forsake us. The scripture says, and what can mere man do to us? Nothing. All they can do is send us to heaven, and we're out of here anyway. And I know that it's easy to say and maybe harder to do when we come up against things, but reality is this. The world can't do anything to us. And judgment is coming for them. And I'm asking people, 
who can see what is going on and they're wondering what's going on. Don't wait any longer. Today is a day of salvation. Don't wait any longer. God is calling you. He's calling you to him. Receive him as Savior. You will not have to deal with all of this. And you will have a God that you know will always be beside you no matter what. Only the Lord can fix what is going on in this world today. Now I'm going to go on and start with verse 3, and I'm going to read it speaking of the locust or the tribulation for us. This is what it says about this time. A fire, a fire devours before them. Behind them a flame burns. This is like the locust, but we know what we're really talking about. The land is like the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Surely nothing shall escape them. Well, that's what locusts do. Everything's perfect before them, but when they're done, in a matter of minutes or hours, everything is destroyed, down to nothing. Their appearance is like the appearance of horses, and like swift steeds, so they run. With a noise like chariots, over mountaintops they leap, like the noise of flaming fire that devours the stubble, like a strong people set in battle array. Before them the people writhe in pain. All faces are drained of color. They run like mighty men. They climb on the wall like men of war. Everyone marches in formation, and they do not break ranks. They do not push one another. Everyone marches in his own column. Though they lunge between the weapons, they are not cut down. They run to and fro in the city. They run on the wall. They climb into the houses. They enter at the windows like a thief. The earth quakes before them. The heavens tremble. The sun and the moon grow dark, and the stars diminish their brightness. That's a pretty rough time. That's a rough time. And that is what is coming. That's what Joel says is coming. Like how the locusts were destroying the land during that time, that is what's going to happen to this earth and to the people later on. Now, I understand <laughs> I really did not want to preach this message because I know how tough it is and I know how hard it is for some people to receive. But receive it in the name of Jesus. Don't buy all this other stuff. Receive this in the name of Jesus. And this is what the scripture says in verse 11. The Lord gives voice before his army, for his camp is very great. For strong is the one who executes his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible who can endure it? No one's going to endure it unless the Lord comes to stop it. And the Lord is the only one that's going to stop it. And we know at the end of seven years, he's going to come. And he's going to take care of this and he's going to fix it. And we know what happens to the devil. We know he's going to be put in the abyss for a thousand years. But the Lord is the only one and he has the big voice. He is the one who commands. He is the one that, that created this world with his, with his own words. And he can stop this stuff with his own words, and he is going to. And that really is a great day of God, the great day of God. He's going to finish all of this. So when all these things are happening, you can say, but the Lord gives voice before his army, for his camp is very great, and he's going to take care of all of this stuff. So right now, I'd like to end with just a little bit of verses 12, 13, and 14. And it's another call to repentance. And I know this is a short message, but is it a strong message? Yes, it is. It's a strong message. And this is what the Lord says. Now, therefore, says the Lord, turn to me with all your heart. That's repentance. Turning to God with all our heart. With fasting, with weeping, with mourning. Then it says this. So rend your heart and not your garments. Now, back in the day, people, if they mourned, if they really were sorry about something, if they wanted something to happen, they would show it by tearing their garments. Tearing their garments. But the Lord doesn't want torn garments. He wants a torn heart toward him. A softened, contrite heart. That's part of repentance. So rend your hearts, not your garments. This is not an outward thing. This is an inward thing that the Lord wants. Then it says, return to the Lord your God, for he is, this is what he is, he is gracious, and he is merciful, he's slow to anger, and of great kindness, and he relents from doing harm. That's who the Lord is. 
when people repent, if a nation will repent, he'll heal the land. We talked about that last week. He will. But understand, no matter what, it just doesn't matter what people say. What matters is what the Lord says. And he says, this time is coming. This time is coming. And it's closer right now than it's ever been. Right now. So we need to really get ourselves ready. And I'm not saying that uh, we're not going to see tough times. We're in the middle of a tough time right now. We're not having church. So we're having to do it over camera. And uh, the time is coming when we're going to come back to church. And we're going to meet about that tonight. So the Lord does bring things in our lives for a purpose. And the purpose of the tribulation is for people to get right. And I believe there's going to be people get right. Some people may argue with that. They can. Maybe they're right. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know, but I don't think so. Because I believe there's going to be people who do get right during this period. Because he loves his people so much, he will cause them to face their sin and will bring them to the place of repentance, confession, and restoration. So things are shaping up. Things are coming. The day of the Lord is coming. I want to go to 2 Peter uh, chapter 3, verse 9. Because I really don't know when this is going to happen. This prophecy was made 2,800 years ago. But this is what it says in 2 Peter 3, 9. But beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that, they should, that any should perish, but that all should come to where? That all should come to repentance. That is God's will, and people get to choose that. And that's why this hasn't happened yet. He's still waiting for people to repent. He's still waiting for people to come. But the time is coming, and it is going to happen. And as one preacher preached a message a couple of years ago, maybe three years ago, in Bend, Oregon, at Compass Church, I was there, and he said, there's coming a time when the door will be shut. The door will be shut. It's one of the <laughs> sermons that I'll never forget. And I don't get to be in church and not preach very often. So I got to be there with my son and, and his wife, and they were on staff there at that time. And he had a door, and he would go up and he'd shut it. There's coming a time when the door will be shut. Don't let the door be shut on you. Praise God. So right now we're going to come with you uh, with an old song that I recorded quite a, quite a while ago. And it's called The Old Rugged Cross. And we're going to do this in memory of Emerson and June McGrath. So I hope you enjoy it. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sin was slain so I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross Change it someday for a crown.
rugged cross I will ever be true It's shame and reproach Gladly bear Then He'll call me someday To my home far away Where His glory forever I'll share So I'll cherish the old I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown so I'll cherish the old rugged cross At last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown And exchange it someday for a crown We hope you have been blessed by this week's presentation from the Word of God as you face the trials of each new day this coming week. We encourage you to reach out to us from the medium platform where you found us, or feel free to write us at Columbia River Fellowship, PO Box 314, Mansfield, Washington, 98830. Tidbits of the Word is a Red Guitar production. Remember this week to... Please.